Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this. Now this is a Sultan of Oman's Armed Forces DPM Combat Smock. It is made in essentially the same DPM print as British but using different colours. So this is a four colour DPM print. The smock itself is based on the 1968 pattern which is why we have one of those here. Also gives a nice contrast between the two colours of DPM, the British Temperate and the SOAF DPM on the left here, or your right as you're looking at it. Very similar to, though not identical to, British four-colour desert DPM, which had been introduced in the 1980s or developed in the 1980s. It wasn't actually introduced into service in British use, but it would influence some Middle Eastern countries in the way they developed their combat clothing in the 1980s. And this is one example of that. So quite interesting from that point of view, a British DPM print, but in a different selection of colours. And SOAF DPM is quite distinctive with this very orangey, and very very pale grey green colour with the tan and the black. It's a lovely print, I really like it and it's been fantastic. Thank you very much again to Jack McCabe to receive some of this DPM clothing in the uh, as a gift uh, from his service with the, the SOAF in the 1980s. So the smock itself, we'll talk a little bit about the details and so forth on the front here and we'll move it round and then we'll turn it inside out as we normally do. First of all we can see the pocket layout here. We have two chest pockets, two hip pockets, pointed flaps, and very, very similar layout to that on the 1968 pattern. It's essentially copied across. The buttons are different. We have a US type plastic buttons, very, very similar to the shape of those used on the Tropical Combat Uniform and BDU and so forth. So very, very similar in that regard. to US practice, obviously differing from the, the British smock in that regard. Similar sort of construction in terms of, obviously we have the, the darts let in here, the same on the British smock. The collar and everything is basically exactly the same with a single button, so it can be buttoned up around the neck there. We've got a heavyweight metal zip underneath the uh, the buttoned closure on the front here, a very heavyweight metal zip, which is actually a bit stiff, I think, just from the fact that this has not been used. It probably needs a bit of lubrication, but a very heavyweight zip, heavier duty, in fact, than that on the British smock. Made of a lighter weight material, the British at this point, this is quite a late 1968 pattern. It's made of cotton modal, which is a cotton mix. It's no longer pure cotton. This is made of a polyester cotton mix, and we'll see the details of that when we look at the label a little bit later on in the video. We do have a draw cord at both waist and at the hem here. We'll see that in more detail again when we turn this inside out and have a look at the further details. But that's the front of the two smocks. As you can see, very, very similar. Similar layout of buttons, similar layout of pockets and so forth. And basically the same design as smock, but this made in a different material and a different camouflage pattern. Um, but it is essentially a 1968 pattern combat smock. Anyway, we'll move this round now and we'll have a look at the left-hand side of the two. Looking at the left-hand side of the two smocks here, we can see, first of all, on the arm, very obvious there is an arm pocket. Very, very similar design on the British here, with one section stitched off. You perhaps see it's a little easier here, there's a line of stitching there to create a pen pocket, and that's a bit basically copied directly across, right down to the pointed pocket flap. The cuffs adjust, you have two buttons as you can see here and a little pointed tab there. We open this up, if I can, the buttons are a little stiff, this is pretty much unworn so you can see we do have a gusset in the in the cuff there and close that up and essentially that's copied across from the 1968 pattern as is the rest of the design. We have a look here, we open this up, you can see essentially the same design there but the gusset and the two adjustment buttons and the little pointed adjustment tab there on the cuff. So that's essentially copied directly across. Looking up to the shoulder here, we can see that the epaulets are quite long and stitched on in a very similar way, attached into the shoulder seam in a very similar way to the British smock. Hold that up there. You can see quite a long epaulet running up to the collar. Not all the way up to the collar. The button is actually stitched onto the, the shoulder here. The button on the British example is stitched on up here on the collar, as you can see here. So the idea of that is there are actually three buttons around the collar to allow the attachment of a hood on the British smock. And the, the button on the epaulette there does double duty, securing the epaulette and attaching the hood. There's no button to the rear on this one, as we'll see. So that feature has been removed from this design. You don't have the option to button a hood onto the smock. The epaulettes are slightly shorter in consequence and the button is down on the shoulder rather than up on the collar. We'll move these around now and have a look at the back. Looking at the back of the two uniforms here, you can again see the seams and everything here, the, the darts down the side are basically exactly the same. You have the waist taken in in exactly the same position. 
and again the draw cord at the waist which can be quite clearly seen there so the back again shows very similar details between the two smocks as said you can see the third button here on the british smock that is omitted from the amani smock here as you can see that's not part of this design but otherwise very very similar we'll move these around now and have a look at the right hand side Looking at the right hand side here, you can see that there is no arm pocket on the right hand side. It's omitted from both designs, basically a direct copy of the 1968 pattern in that regard. The cuff and everything is, of course, exactly the same design as we looked at before. But that is the right hand side of these two smocks. OK, so looking at the inside of these two smocks, we can see that the SOAF smock is lined in essentially the same way as the 1968 pattern. The British smock here and it has a single internal breast pocket, exactly the same as that on the British smock as well. Obviously, when worn, this would be on the wearer's left-hand side, so you'd be reaching in with your right hand to get at that, but it's obviously, with it turned inside out, it looks a little different. Waist cord, you can see at the waist here, we said that would be a little clearer looking at the, the inside, and you can see that here, it's the same position, essentially. Slightly unusual detail on the British smock, just to mention here, is the actual maker's label here, which I've not seen previously. Quite an interesting little detail. We'll perhaps talk about that in a future video where we're considering this in more detail. Down at the bottom, we have another draw cord. You can see the analog on the British design there. So again, that featured those features copied directly across. And if we open this up here, you can see the very heavy duty, the very large metal zip, uh, much larger in fact than that fitted to the British example, as you can see. It's a very large heavy duty zip. As I say, it seems to be a bit stiff. It probably needs some lubrication because this doesn't appear to have been used or worn previously. So that's, uh, that's a, a very nice feature of the design here is the very heavyweight zip. Made of a lighter material, but nevertheless lined, which is interesting. It's made of a thinner poly cotton material, but nevertheless has a, a full lining, as you can see. We'll turn these around now and we'll have a look at the back. So looking at the back of these two, there's one obvious feature that the British smock has, which has not been copied across to the SOAF smock, and that is the tail. Consequently, as we'll have seen at the front, the six buttons, which allow this to be adjusted, buttoned through and adjusted, had also been removed. Obviously, this is akin to airborne clothing, the airborne smock, parachutist smock. It's a feature that was copied across from that in the British design. It's been deleted from the SOAF smock. However, you still have the poacher's pocket to the rear. That has been copied across. Obviously, without having that tail, the opportunity has been taken to space the two buttons a little more uh, across the back of the pocket there, across the pocket closure. They're very close together here because they serve double duty in holding up the, the tail of the rear when it's not in use as well. So that's a slight deviation in the design, but you still have this big pocket to the rear, which could be used to carry soft kit, that sort of thing. That's the idea of it. How often these were actually used in British service, I don't know, but that feature has been copied across to the SOF design anyway. We do have a hanging tab at the collar here, as you can see, the same as on the British smock here. Obviously, the label positioning is the same for the actual details of the garment. And of course, we'll get a close up of this now and have a look at that. So as you can see, very simple nomenclature here, combat smock DPM, and then we have the cotton polyester mix, camouflage and size S2, and then the various other details regarding washing and so forth. And then finally here, we'll take a close up look at the SOAF DPM print. So it's a very nice print. I like this camouflage. It's another interesting addition to the collection of DPM I have from various different countries. So thank you once again, Jack, for this. It's fantastic to have another derivative piece of DPM camouflage in the collection. So there we are. I hope you found it interesting looking at this. As I say, a Sultan Vermont's Armed Forces DPM combat smock based very closely, as we can see, on the British 1968 pattern. And very easy to see that the design is essentially taken across. Some minor variations and obviously made in a different material different details such as the buttons and so forth, but the, the cut of the garment is essentially the same. I do hope you found it interesting looking at this. If you'd like to see more from the channel going forward, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below, which will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. There's both Patreon and PayPal linked down below. And a massive thank you as ever to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is very much appreciated. Thank you all very much. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. There's Facebook, Instagram and Twitter all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.